Mitsubishi Outlander SEL Premium Package We We have one Sitting in front of us Before you go drive a RAV4 Come take a look at us Ford Escape is left behind by a warranty coverage. Save your life, oh, oh baby. You're stuck on the side of the road. Five years unlimited miles warranty coverage. Roadside assistance, yeah. It's a fishy outlander today. CRV is gone. You better come drive the Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Today we have with us Mitsubishi's answer to the compact SUV segment. This is a 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander in the SEL trim, all wheel drive, seven seater, good warranty coverage and a lot of luxury features on the inside. I'd like to give a big thanks and shout out to Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland for allowing me to spend the day with this 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander SEL. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with this car and I'm really excited that I'm able to get all this content for you guys to see of this brand new Outlander. A special thanks to the management team at Younger for making this happen. The Younger group does sell more than just Mitsubishi they also have a Toyota store, they have a Mercedes store, and they have a Nissan store in Frederick, Maryland. I'll go ahead and put Younger's information in the description below if you're interested in purchasing a vehicle anytime soon, or if you know anybody in the market for a vehicle, definitely send them to the Younger group as they will take great care of you in your next car purchase. As we move into this video, you'll probably notice my blue hand, and what that is, is soap. I have had the car all day, and before filming it, decided to take it to a car wash, wash it thoroughly, and wipe it down, detail it on the outside. The inside is really, it is a brand new car, so the inside is just fine, but the outside from sitting on the lot was a little dirty. Now throughout this video, you'll see my cotton candy hand pointing at different features on the vehicle. Let's get started with trim levels. Base model Outlander is gonna be the ES, starts at $27,895. Then we have the SE Special Edition coming in at $29,845. We have the SE from $30,945. Then we have the Black Edition coming in at $32,145. The SEL, which is what we have with us today, starting at $34,445. Then we have the SEL Black Edition from $35,895. And we have the Ralliert, $35,945. And finally, the 40th Anniversary Edition, $40,295. If you're in the market for a compact SUV, you might be thinking RAV4, Ford Escape, Honda CRV, Hyundai Tucson. And while those are good choices, this might be one that you've just simply overlooked. And I hope that this video will inform you enough to make a well-informed decision when you're purchasing your next vehicle, if it is in this class. Hopefully you'll get some great information from this video. Now that we've covered all the trims that are available, I'd like to touch on the specifics of this one right here. Here's a good look at your window sticker. Feel free to pause if you'd like to take a closer look. We have the total MSRP of this one coming in at $42,080. For extra options and add-ons, we have the white diamond exterior with the black roof. That is $995. This is the premium package. So it's SEL premium. The premium package adds $2,700. 
but it does give you a lot of extra options and add-ons. Premium package gives us heated steering wheel, synthetic leather door inserts with quilting, the black saddle and tan, as we'll take a look as we move inside momentarily, 10.8 inch heads up display known as HUD, Bose premium sound system with 10 speakers. I have to say the audio system on this car is crystal clear. I've enjoyed listening to some of my favorite songs throughout the day with this Bose audio system and those 10 speakers. And it does have a power panoramic sunroof, which most of the day in my care has been open. I've really been enjoying that as well. Next up, we have the cargo package coming with this one that we have today. $195 that gives us the cargo management system, cargo scuff plates that are metal, and then also the seat back net. In the hatch of this Outlander, we will find also under options the tonneau cover that is retractable. That is a $200 add-on. Up in the front of the vehicle, we'll notice that the hood emblem is chrome and that is a $125 option. And it does have the welcome package as Mitsubishi calls it. That is the touch-up paint pen, uh, which is the body color of the vehicle, a console tray mat, floor mats that are carpet, and vehicle manuals with a binder. All of that comes together in a welcome package, as they call it, for $175. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look at the engine powering this Outlander. Hood release is immediately to the left when you open the driver's door. Up front here on the hood, the pole release is right below the Mitsubishi logo. It does not have a hydraulic hood, so we have a metal hood support, as you can see right there. So what we're looking at here is Mitsubishi's 2.5 liter dual overhead cam four-cylinder with direct injection, producing 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque, paired to a eight-speed continuously variable transmission. Also, powering the vehicle is what Mitsubishi calls their all-wheel drive system, SAWC. That's Super All-Wheel Drive Control. I saw that and I decided that I was going to call it SOC. That's something that made me remember what Mitsubishi calls their all-wheel drive system. That eight-speed continuously variable transmission is shift by wire and we have paddle shifters, which I have not used, but before I return the car to Younger, I do plan to give those a test. I'll be sure to get that in a video of some sort on the channel, whether it's this review or a separate video. For exterior features, we do have LED low and high beam headlights. We have LED fog lights, LED daytime running lights, headlight washers, automatic headlights. We have silver front and rear bumper lowered trim. As you can see right there at the bottom, not a chrome finish, but just a silver painted finish. We'll find that out back as well, stepping out to the rear of the vehicle. Nice accenting on the vehicle by Mitsubishi. We do have body colored side sill trim, body colored side mirrors with LED turn indicators, power folding side mirrors, heated side mirrors, front wiper de-icer, front variable intermittent wipers with integrated washers, front rain sensing wipers. We do have a rear window defroster with timer and also power lift gate with adjustable height. Currently inside the Outlander is my daughter's stroller and also some cleaning supplies that I've used to give the vehicle a nice little detail today. Nice size entryway leading into the vehicle. We have a capless fuel filler and your gas door is released by just pressing it and it pops right open. We do have a body color rear spoiler. Now with this one here, having the white diamond and black roof option for $995, that spoiler becomes black to match the black roof. Up top, we have silver roof rails. In the back, listed under exterior features is the SEL badge. Also listed under the exterior features is the SAWC, super all wheel control 
decal there on the window. And we have some sharp looking 20 inch wheels. These are 20 inch two-tone alloys, 255, 45R20s, Bridgestone Ecopias. The Outlander does come with a tire repair kit also. Stepping inside the Outlander, take a look at that beautiful interior. I am impressed with the quality of the interior for this vehicle by Mitsubishi. Beautiful pattern with stitching, nice perforated leather, good bolstering on the seats. These are comfortable seats. I've spent a good bit of the afternoon driving this car and it is just really comfortable. Those seats after an afternoon of driving, you don't feel uncomfortable at all. And I would imagine on a road trip, it would be the same result. So for our interior features, we have a leather wrapped steering wheel. We also have a leather wrapped shift knob. Very interesting design to this leather wrapped shift knob. And also we have a machined aluminum shift panel. On the doors we have synthetic leather door inserts with quilting. We have eight way power adjustable driver seat with memory for the seat and outside mirror linked with key fob. Over on the front passenger side we do have a four way power adjustable seat. Heated front seats and heated rear seats. In the rear of the Outlander for the middle seating here, we do have a 40-20-40 split type for this second row seat with the folding function, meaning that this seat right here folds, the middle section folds, and also the other side over there folds all separately. And for this segment to have a seven seater, that is a good value if you have a large family or maybe you just wanna have that extra passenger space just for the sake of it, for emergencies or road trips or what have you, this is something that not all the competition has mastered is a seven seater in this segment. So kudos to Mitsubishi for going the extra mile to make the Outlander a seven seater. Go ahead and apply your foot to the brake and push the push button ignition to start. And you'll notice that power driver seat will go back to the setting that I had it in. The interior does have a nice feel driving down the road. This system is responsive. I have my phone paired to it and I haven't had any lag issues at all. I haven't experienced any difficulties using it. So it's been enjoyable to operate that system. Hey buddy. Hey, what's up? Where are you at? I'm at your house. What are you doing at my house? I'm doing a audio test on the Mitsubishi Outlander. All right. How's it going? I interrupted. Good, good. I'm all done there. I was gonna I was calling to see. I'm gonna get probably get a drink for your sister. So I'm gonna see if you want one from somewhere. I'll have a double shot espresso, iced, in a large cup with extra ice and coconut. <laughs> Can you text me that? Yeah, I'll text it to you. <laughs> Is your sister inside? Are you outside or what? Yeah, I'm outside doing a music concert for the neighborhood in the Outlander. Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't interrupt me. You just made your way into the video. It's okay. Oh, Lord. Okay. I was doing an a audio test and I got the Bluetooth on the speakers. So, hey, now we know what yeah. it sounds like on the phone call. It's very clear. Well, there you go. That's good. I love you. See ya. See ya. We have a nine inch navigation system with smartphone link display audio known as SDA. We have wireless Apple CarPlay, which I've been able to enjoy today as well. Google Android Auto, Sirius XM All Access, SXM Traffic and Travel Link with a 90 day subscription. Just ahead of our steering wheel here, we'll find our digital driver display. That is a 12.3 inch full digital driver display. And I like this setup here. It is easy to keep track of everything. We've got our temp gauge over there, our tack, our miles, distance to empty, our fuel gauge, and then also our speedometer over on the right. Assuming we didn't have the premium package with us today, giving us that Bose premium audio, then we'd have HD radio with six speakers. The Outlander does have smartphone wireless charging. We have Bluetooth technology, steering wheel audio and phone controls. 
steering wheel voice recognition control and you'll find those over on the right side the bluetooth and the voice recognition we have a front and rear usb port so something that i've used in the outlander is both of those ports i've got my gopro battery charger plugged into the front usb port and i've got my cell phone charger usb plugged into the rear usb so it's nice that we have two usb ports in the outlander we have a multi-view camera system also we have our drive mode selector right down here and this little knob is going to give us tarmac gravel snow normal eco and mud mode and as we turn this here i'm going to go ahead and actually put it on eco you'll see that there's a little image for each mode there's a different outlander that pops up so here we have eco we've got some trees in the background there on a road normal looks like that's just a road with some city buildings in the background tarmac it looks like kind of a desert area gravel snow and mud my personal favorite background for this drive mode display is the mud the display that comes up there when we put it into mud mode changing these drive modes i've been driving with it in normal mode all day we just witnessed the push button start right there we do have mitsubishi's fast key entry system with that push button start rear door pull up sunshades looking into the rear that is a nice feature as we get in the back i'll show you those great if you have children back there especially newborns we have a auto dimming rear view mirror also that 40 20 40 seat back there i know i have my car seat base there now but there is a folding armrest a rear center armrest with cup holders back there Mitsubishi has done well with giving their vehicles, including the Outlander, good safety features. Some of those safety features include an anti-lock braking system, ABS with electronic brake force distribution, EBD with brake assist. Right here in the center next to our drive mode selector, we will find our electronic parking brake with auto hold. We have ASC, that is Active Stability Control, HSA, that is Hill Start Assist, TSA, which is Trailer Stability Assist. Of course, the vehicle does have a TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring System. With that system, you are going to have the tire fill notification. To put the vehicle in park, just push the park button and make sure your foot is applied to the brake. We do have automatic high beams. Forward collision mitigation, that's FCM, with pedestrian detection. This screen I have it on here is the emergency braking screen. So for the rear auto emergency braking, the sensors and the Outlander's rear bumper detects if objects are behind the vehicle. As you get really close to where you're about to touch an object, it'll beep and you'll hear beep, 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 and then it'll hold with the red lights there. The rear auto emergency braking issues an audible warning and attempts to stop the vehicle. Then we have forward collision mitigation with pedestrian detection. And if the Outlander detects a car or pedestrian in front of the vehicle through the radar and camera, a warning appears. If the brakes are not applied and the vehicle detects that a risk of collision is imminent, then the forward collision mitigation applies the brakes. Driving down the highway, you will also notice that we have the blind spot warning. So when a vehicle is approaching your blind spot, the warning light on the side view mirror illuminates. If your turn signal is also on, then the warning light blinks and the system beeps three times to signify that it's unsafe to change lanes. And I've experienced that in real time driving on the highway. As we merge onto the highway, I'm gonna go ahead and push that button right there and you'll see the screen for our blind spot, our forward collision, and our lane keeping assist system pop up there. We do have active blind spot assist. By applying the brakes after initial warning, the active blind spot assist supports the avoidance of a collision by detecting other vehicles in the surrounding lanes, even when you can't necessarily see them. If while you're driving, the vehicle hits one of the lines on the shoulder or to the left of the vehicle, the steering wheel does vibrate when your hands are on it. 
and you'll also notice that the vehicle does apply the brakes it tends to slow down right now I'm going to do a demo by taking my hand off the wheel and letting it go toward the shoulder and you can see how that speed dropped and also the vehicle gave you the flashing alert there for 2022, the Mitsubishi Outlander was awarded an IIHS Top Safety Pick, its highest safety rating for vehicles built after June of 2021. Inside of this vehicle settings, through this 12.3 inch full digital cluster, you are able to control the safety settings and features. By accessing the settings menu, you are able to actually control your ASC, you're able to control your driver assistance settings. The steering assist can be turned off. Going into lane, you can turn on or off the LDW and LDP, that's lane departure warning, lane departure prevention. By pushing blind spot, you can turn on or off the blind spot warning and the active blind spot assistant. By clicking emergency brake, as we mentioned earlier, front and rear brake controls can be adjusted for that auto braking, traffic sign detection, speed adjusted by route, speed limit assist, parking sensors, and that's gonna give you the ability to turn on or off things like detection for moving objects, auto show sonar, front rear, distance, volume, rear cross traffic alert, driver attention alert, timer alert, low temp alert, all those are settings that can be adjusted. If we go deeper into this, we are able to adjust other settings that are not safety related, but there is at least a little bit of insight on how you can control some of those safety settings if you find them invasive or you want to add more of them if some of them are turned off. All you have to do is just go to the settings section on your gauge cluster by using these arrows, click OK, and then you're right there. You can scroll up and down to adjust those settings. This 2.5 liter paired to the eight speed CVT and Mitsubishi's all wheel control system, you're gonna get 24 miles per gallon city, 30 on the highway with a combined average of 26 miles per gallon. Estimated annual fuel costs are coming in at approximately $1,700. For warranty coverage, we do have a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty, a seven year, 100,000 mile anti-corrosion warranty, a five year, 60,000 mile new vehicle limited warranty, and also five year, unlimited mile roadside assistance. That is a nice extra benefit to have when purchasing a Mitsubishi, something that'll definitely give you great peace of mind as you're traveling with your family. The final assembly point of the vehicle is Japan, and also the engine and transmission are made in Japan as well. Some of you may be curious, so I figure I would just let you know now, I've got all these windows at the same level these back windows here are down as far as they go of course the front ones go down all the way but these back ones are down all the way in this position here that's as far as they go down some of you might find that a little bit disturbing i've had many people comment on past videos about the distance of which back windows of a vehicle go down so just something i'd throw out there for you all it is a good chance for us while the window is down though to show the sunshade. Look at that. I will be doing a car seat demo aside from this review to just show you how easy it is to get the car seat in and out of the vehicle. That seat is in my comfortable driving position. I'm about 5'8", and I do have plenty of legroom back here. We've got rear seat nets on the driver and passenger seats. We have our climate control down here along with our heated seat controls. And then we have the USB port down there and USB type C port as well. I've got the hatch area unloaded. So we'll go ahead and pull our third row seats up. And these are rather large headrests, but reason being, even though I haven't been back here yet, it looks like because these seats are rather short. Now let's get a good look at that third row space. I imagine it's a challenge to fit a third row 
in a compact SUV, an SUV in this segment. So let's see how Mitsubishi did with that. Definitely important to see how easy it is to get into that third row. As we know we have the third row, but it's definitely good to see how functional it is. I'm gonna put this seat in a comfortable position for myself. We've got the driver's seat in my position. I can put this up just a little bit more. So I've got this up more to where I've got about two inches of leg room, maybe three. Fold this forward. And then hop in to the rear. And we'll adjust it back even with the other one. All right, so that is reclined. And I've actually got a couple of inches here with this seat up in a position that's comfortable for myself. Headroom is, to be honest, tight. I'm 5'8", and my head is touching here on the roof. Uh, it's just barely touching as I move around. If I go to put my head back, it is kind of cramped. I mean, what do you expect for a third row seat in this segment? It's just impressive that Mitsubishi was able to fit a third row seat into a vehicle this size. It does feel rather cramped back here, but I mean, hey, if we had to go on a road trip with seven people in the Outlander, it is doable. Getting in and out is not really that difficult, but there's bigger third row seaters out there. I'm not gonna beat this third row seat up that much because this is a small SUV. This is a compact SUV and we're, we're able to, to get in the back and, and sit in a third row seat in this size of an SUV. That right there is impressive in and of itself. <laughs> Seven seater for the fam. Hit the road and you will find out the comfort is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment your thoughts on this video, rate the video before you go, smash that thumbs up button, and subscribe today so you don't miss any future videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time.